poem. Uh, and it's a poem that it could only happen here in this room with you guys. Um, and it's a poem that can only really happen once. Um, and yeah. it, it has a little bit of a, a caveat, which is that uh, Robert Frost, who was a great poet and also a great jerk, um, <laughs> once said that great poetry really approximates the sound of sense, right? Which is, and, and his metaphor for it was the sound made by people speaking in another room with the door closed. And he said the great poetry was supposed to sound like that. So my first poem is going to be called Robert Frost, The Jerk. Um, and it is going to be simply 20 seconds of silence while we listen to the people in the other room. In the dining room. Beginning now. Spanish, of course, because Spanish was my first language and I'm a Spanish teacher. Um, and I like to enact uh, upon my poor and fortunate readers the same process of cultural confusion that I underwent by reading poems in Spanish. So I apologize, but I sort of don't apologize. Um, this one's called Lincoln with Kennedy, and they're the two main streets in San Diego. Miseria is a carnival without stoplights, where a lone cop in colonial khaki is casi atropellado by a fugue of motorbikes with ten girls cantando entre snarling cars, even one-armed man trying to wash the windshield of my mother's Mercedes Verde with just a smile. Children, too young, balancing blue tubs of peanut brittle on their so-soft skulls, and the most extreme case of goiter que jamás verás limps past in hot tears. Every now and then, infants hanging off of Haitian women, brightly clad, smile. Second poem is All Grace is False, and we're going to go from the Dominican Republic to love in general. So, The Moon. The moon is a sheet of paper, una hoja de papel, white as winter, covering cattails, rail yards, cold as the icicle on the eve, and far away, tan lejos como all your anxiety. You don't want this poem like you don't want the moon. You fear alone how alone is a soundless vacuum, even bay windows and the dog can't rattle. The moon is a gold dome. I lie. An upturned steeple, a hair the razor misses. Form behind window, bell without sound. What use is a weather vane? I can still tell, am still casting this out to you. The next one's called Roble, and it is a somewhat of a song. Grandfather never grew one highest No rosebud ever sprang from his dull spade. Instead, he would pick up old coconuts and with black carbon blow orchids into them like flames. Phalaenops, he knew their proper names too. Phalaenopsis and Dendrobrium were regalos when occasion demanded and escape when all else demanded too much. Yet for the birth of his children's children, El viejo palanto árboles for Gabriela, a Caribbean pine, to Daniel, a royal palm, and I got a roble, an ironwood oak that grows and grows. The next is called Karl Marx's funeral, uh, and I am referring to the writer of Das Kapital, and the fact that you will hear about his funeral is true. It's on Wikipedia. <laughs> Jackal-headed goddess of the dead, how strange. Your jaw-colored ochre, then the congregant worms. Even if you are only the schemata of ribs that was once a dog, you'll remember the swift years before the law. Even if, these days, men can only look, at least he has finally arrived to stare. Jackal-headed goddess of the dead, 
There were only 17 mourners at Karl Marx's funeral, and they are watching me masturbate again. <laughs> it is the fourth time today. I am furious and live in a very small room. They smell and refuse to discuss capitalism or even your winsome smile. You'll be happy to know that I'm having no difficulty maintaining erection and that I am thinking about the impossibility of satisfaction under capitalism particularly and with you always. <laughs> this next one is called Immigrant Fiction Number Two. I don't know where Immigrant Fiction Number One is. <laughs> they came from past through, left, settling, they moved to, ran, away, fled. Then from, why did they go, to, his mother is, his father born into, they both forgot, job opportunities, or tied to. Just follow me. I know a man have a friend, have heard of a place where we can all. This next one is called Gideon's Bible. Let's call him Isaiah. I was 17 the first time he died. I encountered his blue body sprawled on the beach at dawn, place a sprig of sea grape over his milked eyes. He must have fallen off the boat, taking him across. Death by water I never understood, until I swam in Lake Tagani. Sweet, dark, and cloying, she wouldn't hold me like all my oceans. That second time in a motel, bath, tub, with the television on, dripping water down the side, the drowned man thumbs the pages of Gideon's Bible absent-mindedly before saying, Who do you think braids the surf into the knees, twists the tide into your wrists, asking me, Will you strike the name of the land from my eyes? Please just let me stack the sea glass until the faraway mountains become last Sunday bathers at the beach, clinging to each other in the swell. Uh, number five, telenovela, and this is uh, dedicated to an eponymous cousin named Mario that I have, who is an absolute dog. <laughs> he was cunning enough to break loose out of hell with one bristly pineapple under arm, telling anyone who would listen how boring the television was, winding that melodrama around his wrists like a boiled leather strap, until, not quicker than anyone, until the rapeseed oil ran down his chin, ruining her dress. This next one is called Blackout, and uh, what you need to know about it is that the word apagón in Spanish means blackout. Cut current. Each neck snaps to attention. The lights, fans, all flickering, fondling, stops. It gets damn hot, sticky. Everybody leaves Hiroshima shadows of sweat on the sheets. Boredom actually physically hurts after the fourth hour of manually aerating the fish tank. Hey, look, inside each tiny bubble, a city, absolute, abject, alone, except for all the fish. What must atomic people in bubble cities think of you, O oh absent father in the cloying night? You left, just like the light, for work, for another country. You'd call once a fortnight, and when the power went out, I'd pick up the receiver and whisper into the telephone, Apagón, apagón. 
This one's called Paolo and Francesca, and even though they're not here, I hope they're here in spirit, this is dedicated to two friends of mine in my last workplace who were having a flagrant and sultry affair. Um, <laughs> and Paolo and Francesca, of course, refers to Dante's two friends' love. Um, they were reading a poem aloud to each other in the lunchroom. Old and incomparably dirty, it began, I will fuck you up the ass, I will fuck you in the mouth. She was cheating on her husband. He needed her pale feet. One weekend, she came back from Philadelphia, rust red with sunburn and commitment. But by Wednesday, it was coy, smiles, and catullus again. Because what else did you think lay at the heart of this republic? Um, and if I may indulge you for two more, maybe three. Right, we'll see how we feel. Um, this one's dark, and then the rest will be nicer. This one's called The Brief History of Laughter, um, and it begins with a Nietzsche quote, and there's nothing you need to know about it. Perhaps, if nothing else today has a future, our laughter may yet have a future. And it's Nietzsche from Beyond Good and Evil, great book. Um, Conrad's Typho. From the rained, ruined wheelhouse of the ship, the faint outline of a man, lashed to the railings, cackling mad, the barometer has dropped to its lowest, the world exploding as if someone had opened a vial of wrath. Bear baby, what's the most popular sport in all England? Bears chained to a post, set upon for hours and hours by hounds. The roar and cachination of the crowd as a mastiff catches bear by the throat, that greedy, leering snort of the betters upon the bear as a dog is disemboweled by a swipe of the bear's paw. Amazement, the dog, half dead, holds on. Let's go back to that vile of wrath. Such things exist. I've seen them. In Santiago de los Caballeros during a disturbance, great globs of burning tire smoke my father and I driving through the acrid street, a young brown boy, my age, appears, darts a rock, and then my father stops and pulls his gun. So this will be the last one. Um, and it's called The Moon, a White Rabbit. According to the Chinese legend, a white hare prepares medicine on the moon with mortar and pestle. This is because the moon goddess stole the elixir of life from her dying husband and drank it and promptly left it. So the hair grinds out in medicine to fill the hollow sorrow of the moon, whose failed marriage is the tides. And I myself am about to flee north, which is a way the moon never wanders. If you should miss me, while the tide is out, or come across a rabbit with the moon in its eye. Remember that night is a mortar, and longing a mixture, parting.